how underprepared we were. Uh, we knew as an expansion team, we had uh, 24 first year pros uh, in our roster. And uh, we knew that physically it would be difficult for us to make it through the entire season. Uh, and we needed to rotate the roster. I think those rotations uh, hurt us in the first five games in terms of uh, just building cohesion in the squad. Um, so it was a little bit of a blessing in disguise is, you know, we got to go two and three. Uh, we learned a lot of lessons and we didn't have to suffer through two and 14. And we've gone away and those young players have got nine months of, uh, you know, pretty intense physical conditioning and, and you know, getting them more robust for next season. I, I think that's the first thing. I think uh, the second thing that we learned was, you know, just to kind of take our hands off the wheel a little bit uh, in terms of the players, uh, in terms of working more at the level of intention with them and involving them more in the process. We had so much to do to get ready for the season that uh, we ultimately as you and I have talked about the leadership space, Pete, you know, we kind of, Billy Halu, uh, I think is, uh, you you won't recognize him from last year when you see him this year. He's, uh, you know, he's he's a full on man now. And, uh, you know, I, I expect big things from him. Uh, another pro that's been around a little while, but did come to join us in the 404 and then eventually became contracted with Jason Daum out of uh, Clemson. Uh, again, he's he's just kind of grown leaps and bounds. Um, the guys that we're excited about, that we know that are projects, are Mike Monterazzo, uh, who we you know we drafted on Notre Dame. We like Mike a lot. He looks like an international player. Uh, he moves like one. Uh, you know, when we got all of the guys in the draft on film, um, you know, we all sat up straight in our chair when he did his you know his biomechanics screening. We said, "Well, holy cow." Um, you know, so he's he looks good. Uh, we've got um, Jalen Tatum, who's really interesting. So Jalen is out of Kennesaw State University. He is a true pathway player. Uh, he, he started, you know, coming to our academy two nights a week outside of his time at Kennesaw State. Uh, he's a, you know, 6'4", 230-pound wing that you just can't find. Eastern Conference is going to be a great conference this year. You look at it, you know, and, and the conference games are the ones that are important. Uh, we're going to, we'll open against New York. I think we're excited to play New York. We had a good contest with them last year, uh, third game of the season. They've made a lot of changes uh, there. You know, the, the, the roster has changed quite a bit to our benefit. We got a young American prop, Jonas Petrokopoulos. Uh, from them who are excited about and good to give American players opportunities. Um, so I, I think that's going to be a good matchup for us. I think that you, we're not going to know a lot because things have changed so much there. Uh, so uh, we'll have to stick to our game plan um, uh, with them. I think then comes kind of that Eastern Conference run and uh, NOLA is always, Atlanta and New Orleans are always going to be you know, uh, rivalries in terms of cities. Actually, um, a really cool experience because if we stayed in South Africa, the only chance we would have um, to play together is if we went on to the professional level, basically. And um, as soon as we moved over to the U.S., that's the first thing that we did is play together. And uh, it was just an, it was a really cool experience, you know, speaking off cons on the field and no one else knowing what's going on. So it's just me and him doing some trick plays, you know. Um, but, uh, but once we got to life, um, we took it to the next level, obviously, and uh, we both grew. He, he's, he got the tall jeans and I, I got the short jeans. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, when we went to life, it was just a, it was a really cool experience to go and win a national championship and have your brother next to you. And for the next couple of years and forever, we can tell our kids and our grandkids that when we were back in college, we won a championship together and show them the pictures and show them the, the trophies and everything. And I think that's something that we look back on and uh, really, really enjoy. Um, keep that in the memory bank. It was, uh, it was a surprising um, chat uh, when they asked me to move to nine um, because I thought I was getting caught up at, at, at 10. Um, but it was, it was another challenge for me to face and 
it was uh, one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life going and joining the USA squad and being with them for the Chile and Argentina game. And um, that whole camp, I basically was just taking time to learn how to play nine. Um, and I was lucky enough to be learning from the best players like Ruben the Hawk and Sean Davies. Um, and we have a good friendship. I've known Shawnee and, and Ruben since I played U20s with Ruben and Sean Davies was at life. And that relationship really helped me grow as a player and really enjoy the experience. Um, and since then, I've just been working on, on being the best nine I can be. Um, Ruben is, is an amazing player. I, I watch his game every weekend, basically, for, when he plays for the Cheetahs. And uh, I just try to take notes and really study what he does and try to improve what I, what I, what I need to improve. The NOLA game was, was the best game that we played as a team. Um, I, we felt that we achieved and went into that game with a great game plan and we executed it. Um, the Old Glory game, it was very, it was a frustrating game because we knew that we would go up and then we would just give points back. Go up, give points back. So that was the most frustrating thing is like, we know we can win this game and then just giving up those extra points and towards the end, they, they came up and scored twice and we lost that game because of it. Um, but no, I, I think the best game last season was definitely the Noah game. Um, Noah is a really, really good team and um, we stuck to our game plan and executed really well. In five games, we used 32 players. So I think, you know, the travel takes a lot out of the players and we want to make sure that we have our training load during the week uh, pretty accurate so that our players, you know, who are going to be going on four hour flights to games, um, we just need to manage their bodies to make sure that they're able to have energy. I think we've seen a lot of very good players uh, come to the fore this year. I think there's uh, new coaching staffs coming in that are bringing good IP and I think the league is going to be stronger. So last year, I think from a Rooney point of view, um, we didn't really have enough time to stamp down our identity as a group. And I think that's the key thing for this year in a short window during pre-season. You're trying to connect as a group, align as a group and, and have a real identity. And I think if you look at teams in any league that have been successful, when things get tough, um, generally they have a way of getting through those tough situations because they understand the task ahead you know, they have good ownership as a group of players. And I think that's something that we definitely were aware of when it came to our attention recruiting, to get players in who were responsible, who had really good awareness, who were good squad people, good for the culture. And at the moment, we're working with our senior leadership group and we're working with our players to form that identity. I can look no further than Andy Ellis is a perfect case in point. Uh, New York, it's funny, through high school, uh, club and college is a lot of very good nines in the area so I'm looking at Andy Ellis being the player that he is but also the person off the field I mean I'm thinking of Dylan Lewis who's a collegiate player I'm thinking about Damien Morley or Luke Bersanis and the Kim and Asa club level um, and then you have Connor Buckley and Connor McManus I mean they're all young nines and you have somebody with Andy's experience coming in not only is he going to provide a you know, a great amount of IP and experience for our playing group. But his whole goal is to try and, and you know, get as much touches as he can with, with the younger players and reteach teach them the ins and outs to become a world-class knight. And, you know, we can't underestimate the importance of that for these young players. Um, and then you look at somebody like, you know, Tara Pryor and Ben Bonasso. Ben Bonasso, who's Argentinian, who was born in America, so he becomes eligible for USA. He played Argentina U20s and he's a very good back rower who plays in the wide channels. So you'll be looking to use him on the flanks with someone like Carol Pryor, you know, really elusive runner, um, very good mindset, very smart player. Um, and I think we need that. Uh, I think in this league, it's going to be you know, a slog, we know that. Um, and I think you just need players who can just do that extra bit. So we're aware about bringing in people that can improve our intellectual ability as much as their physical ability so Andy and Cara are perfect case in points and like we try to to keep our players as active as possible we had book clubs and we had guitar lessons so we get had a six-part guitar lessons where players who were interested in learning guitar came on and we did them through zoom um, and we had game simulations and we had like guest speakers we just try to kind of open open their minds a little bit and and, and do some cool things actually one of them Eric Tack is no longer 
he's no longer a Rooney player, um, he got really good at the guitar. I could see it because you know he's a young player, um, he's a young professional, um, very smart guy, and now he's really into the guitar. And yeah, that's part of the battle, isn't it? Like when they're young and they have the time to do things, learning skills for me is being an ex-school teacher. It's something I always harp on to my players about. It's uh, the more you can do, the more you can learn, the better. In, uh, I guess the first two years of Rooney's existence, um, the core of our players were guys with full-time jobs. Uh, the Mike Petries of the world that are school teachers during the day. And so the whole uh, team schedule and plan was around the assumption that guys were working during the day. So I would miss team gym sessions, but training was 7 to 9 p.m. at night. And so take off a few minutes early from work and take the uh, Staten Island ferry over. So that was that was fine, uh, you know, if not for a made for a long day. Uh, this year, it looks like uh, they are planning to have uh, to focus on the guys that are full time. And so training will be in the middle of the day. Uh, but I've been kind of perversely lucky in that COVID has forced everyone remote. I just kind of realized that, you know, nine to five being in the office is not the only solution. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm very fortunate that these things have come in little increments. And so when I tell my job, when I told my job originally, I'm going to need to take a few Fridays off to play rugby. That was reasonable. And then it was, I'm going to need to take some weeks off to go on USA tours. And that was more reasonable. And now when I say, yeah, I'm not going to be online from, you know, nine to noon every day. That's <laughs> like, you know, the death by a thousand cuts that's, that has been working out versus if I showed up day one and said, hi, <laughs> employ me, but I'm only going to be here half the time. <laughs> so I picked up the game uh, in high school. So my high school just kind of randomly had a team. Um, and it, it's a spring sport, at least in Massachusetts, high school sport. Um, and so I played football in the fall, rugby in the spring. Um, and kind of fell in love with the game there. I really liked, you know, coming from eight years of football where obviously it's very regimented, three hours of training every day, doing the same plays over and over. And then I was an offensive lineman, which obviously just adds kind of the simple boredom of all that. And then to say rugby, hey, you get to run with the ball. I played eight in high school. And so uh, it was everything I wanted in the sport. Uh, my high school rugby coach uh, played for the Dartmouth women's team. Um, and so she, who was a Dartmouth 99. Yep. Um, and so she was pitching Dartmouth. Both my folks went to Dartmouth. Um, and so that was kind of a, an easy decision. And then obviously playing there under uh, Mags, learned quite a bit about how to be a, a more well-rounded rugby player. And again, just really enjoyed uh, the culture of the game more than anything. Um, obviously making a lot of friends, torn around, fortunate enough to go with the All-Americans, which meant I got a bit of international flavor there as well. Um, and then after Dartmouth, I, got, I went to Cambridge University for a year. So I got a master's at Cambridge and played there, um, including the varsity match, uh, which was you know wild and yet another door that was opened into the landscape of rugby that just made me fall in love with it more. Aaron and I were talking about this before, but uh, you know, last season, if you look at the, the early season stats, uh, my, my work rate was um, at, at the top of the league. And that's kind of always what I've prided myself on. Um, not, you know, I've not scored a lot of tries, um, but, and I'm not, and I'm probably not making a lot of dominant tackles, but I'm making a lot of tackles and I'm hitting a lot of rucks. And so I think for me personally, it is maintaining that work rate while also um, ensuring that I'm doing it efficiently. Um, and so I would say that if I, if I have one bad tendency, it's that I try to over, try to overwork and try to do everything. And so making sure that I'm personally am fitting into the system and doing what I'm supposed to and not just, you know, hitting every ruck for the sake of it, for the sake of padding my statistics. Um, but I would, I would say that overall, what I want to see is the Rooney team with a strong line out, strong driving mall that we've seen in past years. Um, and obviously I, I, in the line outs, I'll have a strong hand in that. Um, and then just kind of a, a workman attitude around, around the field, especially from our forwards. And I think that, We've seen that that's a, a recipe for success in this league, that you can have all the flair you want, but uh, lineouts, malls, and scrums win games. And so building on that foundation, I think, is, is where we want to be.